So hello, uh, my name is Gerardo Zavala. I work at the University of York as a lecturer. So my main lines of research is about nutrition and nutrition epidemiology. So I have focus on delivering inter uh, interventions for uh, populations in low and middle income countries, Mexico, Cuba, and we are also trying to implement a lifestyle intervention for people with severe mental illness in Pakistan and Bangladesh. And I'm also involved in different types of uh, implementation uh, research, adaptation of interventions, uh, measuring the effectiveness, but also the acceptability of uh, healthcare interventions for uh, populations in low and middle income countries. Se severe mental illness or SMI are a group of uh, mental conditions that impairs uh, the ability for, of the person to perform daily activities. Um, they can be defined as uh, psychotic and, and bipolar uh, disorders and severe depression with psychotic features. Uh, the problem with this uh, population is that they suffer from big uh, health and social inequalities. And probably the most important one is the reduced life expectancy. So people with uh, SMI die on average 15 to 20 years earlier than uh, the general population. And uh, just isolated studies in low and middle income countries have estimated that this mortality gap is even wider in these countries. And what's important is that most of this excess mortality is not because of the mental health condition, but is because of uh, physical health conditions. Uh, most of this excess mortality is due to obesity and its comorbidities such as cardiovascular disease and diabetes. Well, in a recent review, uh, we found that the worldwide prevalence of overweight and obesity in people with severe mental illness was of 60%. Uh, what was important about this review was that uh, there's no available data on the prevalence of or estimates of obesity in most of uh, low and middle income countries. And also we found important differences in the trend uh, of obesity over time in different regions of the world. To fill this uh, research gap that we found in this uh, systematic review about the prevalence of obesity in different parts of the world, we conducted a survey in people with SMI in uh, Bangladesh, India, and Pakistan. This was part of the impact uh, program funded by NAHR here at the University of York. In this survey, we recruited uh, 1,500 participants uh, per country. And we found that the prevalence of over the combined prevalence of overweight and obesity using the WHO cutoff points was of 46%. But if we use the uh, ethnic adjusted cutoff points for the South Asian population, the prevalence of overweight and obesity was over 60%. Once we identified this uh, public health problem, that's the prevalence of obesity in this population, we were interested to look what was done in this context uh, to solve the, the problem. So we undertook a systematic review to evaluate the um, availability and the effectiveness of interventions for weight management in people with SMI in low and middle income country. What was shocking is that uh, despite of this big public health problem, we only found six interventions that um, focus on weight management in this population. So four of them were pharmacological and only two of them uh, were behavioral or lifestyle interventions. And most of the countries where these interventions happened were uh, Brazil, Venezuela, Mexico, so they're in Latin America. And only uh, in South Asia, there was only evidence in India and Sri Lanka. Uh, it's also important to say that in this, uh, we found multiple limitations in these studies. Uh, so many of them had like a high risk of bias and also the sample size was relatively low to power the, the, the studies. However, what's interesting is like, uh, despite these um, limitations, all of the evaluated studies found that interventions for weight management in people with SMI low and middle, low and middle income countries were effective to reduce uh, weight and BMI. What's the next step under the umbrella of the Center for Impact? We're applying for funding to design and adapt context-appropriate interventions for this population uh, for weight management and uh, of course, this is not an easy task because, as uh, you now know, now with uh, COVID, uh, some of the mental health services have been impaired. So we need to think about ways of delivering the intervention, but also we need to think about all the barriers and facilitators that this population might have. So the first step will be to do a qualitative uh, survey to evaluate the barriers and facilitators for a healthy diet and physical activity. 
And we are aware that this might, might also uh, have some financial issues. So we're also going to explore those and uh, a little bit about the food insecurity in this population. The next step after identifying all the, the barriers is to decide how are we going to implement or deliver this intervention because we know uh, this population can have challenges uh, to move to, from one place to, uh, to another, uh, problems with stigma, problems with the willingness to engage with interventions. So we're also planning on doing a patient preference study where we want uh, to decide which is the best way of delivering the intervention. It might be that uh, they need a family member to help deliver the intervention. It might be that they prefer to have it in a clinical setting or a community setting. So we want to uh, be sure that whatever we uh, deliver is more, most likely to be uh, used by the, the population. And then once we have that information, what we're going to do is we are going to go for a adaptation, a intervention adaptation approach. So we're just going to look at the best level of evidence in terms of uh, lifestyle interventions for physical activity and um, diet for this population. And with all the information that we collect in the qualitative study and patient preference study, we are going to make adaptations in order to make this intervention uh, context appropriate for the population. There's a big need for this type of interventions. And actually, it has been neglected by most uh, people just because I don't know if it's the prevalence of the disease or just the stigma surrounding the disease. But, uh, it, but definitely, we need to do something to uh, just improve the physical health and this mortality gap. I'm very proud to say that we have senior representatives and directors from the main mental health institutions in Bangladesh, India, and Pakistan that are supporting and uh, not only supporting, but they are part of the team that is developing these interventions. So of course, that always helps when we think about the scaling up of the interventions and how easy it is for, them, for these interventions to actually be part of a package that can be accessed by this uh, population. So the final idea is to have a yeah, list of modules of the same intervention to tackle the different uh, health risk behaviors of a particular person. So we are also currently working on um, the adaptation of the testing of uh, intervention for smoking or tobacco cessation. The, the next step is to do this one about physical activity and diet. And in the future, we want to con also to continue with uh, interventions about sleeping patterns, for example. So just to have an holistic uh, range of uh, modules that can be tailored to, to the specific person with a uh, severe mental illness. I, I anticipate for the work to continue for at least three to four years, because it's at least one and a half uh, for collecting all the context information. So the qual study, patient preference, then perhaps another year for the feasibility testing, feasibility and uh, acceptability testing, and another two years for going for the full pragmatic trial to test the effectiveness and the implementations out, implementation outcomes of intervention. So we have um, yeah, this great multidisciplinary team that, can, uh, that is genu genuinely uh, interested in the topic and really want to make a change uh, for this population. So if you're uh, interested in any updates about the project or you want to uh, collaborate with us, please just uh, follow us in our uh, social media channels or the webpage of the center. We're always happy to just answer any question or involve more people in this uh, important project.